Welcome back. It's been a while. I actually posted a day 50 track on SoundCloud a while ago. Um, but I didn't make a video about it. And uh, I've been busy with other things this week. But I thought I still should make a video of my last patch in this VCV Rec Experiments uh, challenge that I've now completed. It took uh, much longer than I initially thought it would take because while it's a 50 day challenge I think uh, I took closer to 100 days. I haven't counted. Um, for several reasons. Uh, imp one important one is uh, my computer had some problems and I couldn't use it for doing vSphere experiments for almost two weeks, I think. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, we fixed all that and we've completed the challenge of doing 50 vSphere experiments. And that noise is the last patch in this series. Let's have a look. Here it is. Um, I did this for the uh, Ambient Online Forums one sample there. And I have one sample loaded here. I'm not sure if it will go to, yeah, here. You Pigeons and fish. It was a field recording of one of the other members, the one that won last time. Um, a quite noisy uh, field recording of pigeons at a pond. And I took a fragment of that, cleaned it up a little, and loaded it here in Clear Factory's grain oscillator. And then, of course, I added a load of other stuff, and you can hear the results. I chose here to use the, the times 10, a bigger grain size, um, to get a more percussive, you could say, sample, at least a tiny sample with uh, some more movement in it, not just a constant tone. And uh, as you see, I'm not modulating this oscillator. I'm just using the output, going into two instances of, well, clouds, really. Let's isolate the one that we're uh, going to talk about first. All right, so we have one, a spectro, spectral madness uh, firmware for clouds, and here one, the time stretcher mode, which uh, South Pole has called Camilla. And that is what you're hearing now, if you can hear it. This is the more subtle voice in this patch. Um, so it gets the input here from the grain oscillator, then the output goes to These wave folding modules, and sometimes the output is not so subtle. And that's exactly what I like. I like having this kind of movement and unexpected things happening. Anyway, so we have the time stretcher that stretches uh, the, the, the output of this grain that's being played over and over. And uh, we modulate this with uh, several parameters. Uh, from Caudal. As you can see, I just updated this and uh, we now got the new design. Very cool. All right, so we have some stutter going on that it takes the input and freezes it. Keeps playing that. The overlap parameter is modulated, the pitch parameter is modulated. 
as you can hear. Diffusion and here the low pass high pass filtering is also modulated as well as the feedback. And especially feedback modulation can give very wild results on these uh, clouds modules. So the output goes into wave folding uh, for Apelsen's modules um, two because stereo and here we have folds and symmetry independently modulated so from different outputs of CAUDA. The output of these go into plateau or reverb with some pre-delay um, the high here dialed down quite a bit and here as well so it stays more in the lower register and I've turned this on in tuned mode so the reverb effects are tuned it's not a very tuned sound that gets into it but anyway uh, I'm modulating a few other parameters here uh, subtly enough that uh, it's not too glitchy and you still get smooth movements going on here and uh, finally the output of plateau goes into tangents and the output of those two filters goes into these two channels on our mixer The output of the mixer goes to another plateau module here, which is more dry than wet in this case. And we also meter this before it goes into the audio output. And that is what you hear. Well, there isn't much to hear right now, but I'm sure something will happen soon enough. And sometimes that's really subtle. And you get all this just from one fragment of a field recording sample. And that's not all, because this is just one voice. Then we have the, the voice here on top, which is four different modules well, uh, different incarnations of clouds. They're all based on clouds and its alternative uh, firmwares or different modes. We have spectral madness in a spectro. We have resonester, which is a resonator with different chords. Uh, we have regular smoke and granular resynthesis, granular reverb. And uh, we have Camilla, the, the time stretcher. Initially, I just had them like in series, but then I started playing with pulsers. I wanted to um, try out one of the new modules from Geodesics. Desics, D6? Geodesics, which is a new collection of uh, modules. And here we have uh, eight inputs and we have eight outputs. Oh, there's also this output and here this as an input possibly if you want to use if you want to use the upper and the lower part independently, which is possible, but I'm not doing that. So I'm using eight inputs here and I just thought, well, why not try using all the eight outputs uh, from these four clouds modules. So that's what I did. And then I'm using four outputs to go to four tangents filter modules. And I'm using two of them as low pass filters and two as band pass filters. So what pulses do does is uh, 
go through these inputs as you can see with the blue lights and mix them together according to the amount of voltage that goes into this input. And this voltage comes from an amp module from Poco Audio, VC amp, which takes its input from Nomad. The version that I modded myself to have a more um, let's see, more going on the lower end, on the slower end of this. Um, I'm pushing this through an amp to get a higher voltage out of it because normally the output of Nomad uh, Strange Attractors doesn't go up all the way to 5 volts. And it this uh, pulses needs 5 volts to actually trigger stepping through the different inputs. So that's why I'm amplifying this. And you can already see there is another one going here for this input which steps through the outputs here. So what this does is get the different outputs of these modules that I keep changing the sound, adding to it, modifying it and being all heavily modulated obviously as I tend to do. Um, and I'm going through this, mixing this together and then stepping through it. Well, it's now going in reverse. Uh, that depends on this voltage. If this is positive, it will go clockwise. And if this is negative, it will go counterclockwise. And it will turn white here if it's going counter. So also this modulated here, as you can see from uh, Cardal. So it moves through these inputs, mixes them together before it moves on to the next. And then if it goes in reverse, of course, it's moving backwards. And this is a way to get a lot of movement. And you could just take this as one output, but why would we do that if we can mix different outputs that we then treat in different ways? So I have four outputs that I use here, send them to these filters that are individually modulated. So we're also stepping through these outputs. Now, we are only using four of the outputs while there are four left empty. And that is what this parameter influences, the cosmic void. Now it's lit up. You can see this bright white little light. It's not gray like this one. So it's lit up, which means this is active. When Cosmic Void is active, it mixes the empty outputs here together with the non-empty ones, the connected ones. The same happens here, Cosmic Void, but I'm not modifying this because we're using all eight inputs, so Cosmic Void wouldn't have any effect on the inputs. But since we only have four connections to outputs, this actually does have an effect. So if Cosmic Void is inactive, if this is gray, then we just step from one to the other connected output. But when it is active, uh, we actually mix the empty outputs in there as well. So that means you just get less output, really which in effect leads to more movement, more variation in the final result. 
Okay, so then we have our filters. Uh, we have the resonance turned up quite a bit and modulated just enough to get uh, it almost into self resonance there. Okay, let's uh, let's turn this on actually because we haven't been hearing these for the last few minutes. Just uh, the lower voice there. We can actually mute the lower voice and just get the upper voice. And as you can see in this mix, that's very nice. Uh, it lights up with the amount of input that each channel gets. So now we get input on this channel, which is from the yellow cabled filter here. And now we are in the blue and we're getting the blue output here is light lit up sending signal to this filter and then yeah, yellow red green blue and it keeps uh, cycling through these and i have panned these as well so you can also get movement through the stereo field There's a lot going on here and a lot more possible certain events or situations that only happen once in a while. So I could actually record a longer version of this and see what else happens. Um, I put up a track of, I don't even remember, about five minutes, I believe. But that doesn't really exhaust what's possible with this patch. I had the same thing uh, day 47, I believe. And uh, I recorded a much longer version of that with uh, some slower, seriously slow LFOs on that. And I released that on Bandcamp as a new album called Fermi Paradox. So check that out. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, you can support me by paying for it. Although that's optional, you're welcome to download it as is. All right, so that is the last of my 50 day challenge patches. Obviously, I will continue doing stuff with VCVRAC because I do enjoy it. And I've been thinking of doing some uh, more tutorials. And I have plans for those just the last couple of weeks not come around to it. So stay tuned for more VZV Rack content on this channel. Thank you for following. Um, I've been really happy with the number of people who have been following and who have reacted positively to the content that I produce. So. Thank you guys and check back for some, well, I guess uh, somewhat surprise content next time.